Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth installment of the Metric Minute, brought to you by Vault Performance. I'm Kareem Durkawi, and this time we'll cover part one of two of Concentric Impulse, which is essentially the culmination of the entire jump preparation phase. In plain terms, impulse is a measure of how much force an athlete applies into the ground during any specific time period. Now, concentric impulse refers specifically to the force generated only during triple extension. We all understand how to find the area of a rectangle by multiplying length and width. This is nearly identical to the approach to finding impulse, which is a duration of time multiplied by the amount of force applied over that time. Force Dex collects 1,000 data points per second, and adding up all of the slender rectangles created gives a precise idea of concentric force output. The objective of the game is very simple. Get the most concentric impulse possible in the shortest amount of time. The more force an athlete can generate while standing on the ground, the more power, speed, and jump height they will achieve. Imagine starting a road trip with half a tank of gas compared to starting with a full tank. The car with more juice will go further before it runs out. The take home message is that concentric impulse reports how much force an athlete generates during triple extension. Larger is better, but duration should be minimal to preserve quickness of movement, a favorable trait in many sporting contexts. We will discuss a couple more factors related to concentric impulse next time, but until then, please feel free to contact my colleagues and I at Vault Performance. Thank you. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some awesome practitioners who are always trying to evolve and continue to grow professionally throughout their career. The problem with many of us, though, is finding a new outlet, a new way and a new perspective on the questions that we may have, whether it be programming, whether it be situational with dealing with coaches, or whether it be career advice. Because all too often what happens is we get stuck in with the same group of friends and the same group of colleagues that we reach out to for advice repeatedly over and over again. But what we should really be looking for is different perspectives, different people who have been through different situations who can help us make better decisions both for ourselves and our athletes. And one awesome place to start with that is the forums in the Strength Coach Network. In the forums in the Strength Coach Network, you'll be able to reach out and get feedback, input, and advice from coaches from all over the world from everything from career advice to training modalities to programming, there's people there just for the same reason as you are, to try to get better, to learn, to share information, and to grow the field of strength and conditioning. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay DeMeo coming at you with this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. I'm super happy right now, out for a walk on a really brisk but nice autumn morning. Take some time to reflect, you know, get my, my head sort of around everything that's going on right now and what we're doing uh, when it comes to the preparation for these guys and, and what we're able to do and, and how it's changed so much uh, just because of the climate of the world and everything that's going on. And I think that, you know, one thing that we're doing that's super different than how I would normally do it um, is, is what I want to talk about today. You know, we really like to talk about how plan B needs to be as close to plan A as possible. And I completely agree with that. As a matter of fact, I, I try my best to live that. But I think right now, in the world that we're in, that's going to be really challenging. Because what we have are different situations where we're going to be put in situations or places or with restrictions that borderline eliminate plan A. So what we've done is come up with multiple plans and some plans that are things that I typically wouldn't do um, if I'm being fully candid uh, in the past. Some exercises or, or modalities that are selected and implements that are selected that just based on the fact that you can't have a bunch of other things right now, um, are being utilized to a greater extent, you know, and sitting there and trying to find ways that we can improve 
some capacity of these young men while we're so hamstrung in what we're able to utilize equipment-wise. And this obviously is something that we all went through during the summer, right? But it's November and we're playing a vast majority of our games on the road. So we're spending a lot of time in hotels, in different cities, where there's a fitness center that only lets two people in at a time. Not really the greatest setup if you want to be lifting weights. So what can we do then to provide a stimulus that's going to elicit some form of adaptation? So what we've done is I sat down and I start bouncing ideas off my sports medicine practitioner. Some of them he thinks are great. Some of them he's candid enough to tell me that's a terrible idea. But what we're trying to do is find ways and unique stimulus for these guys that can help elicit an adaptation with minimal um, CNS strain while still allowing us to have those improvements, those adaptations, and not be beat up, tired, whatever it may be. Looking at a ton more of things in what we would typically call, and it kind of makes me nauseous to say this, but different variations of core training. You know, things that work to kind of tick the boxes of the joint by joint approach that for some reason has kind of become less talked about, but I still feel is even more important than ever. You know, when we're looking at all of these restrictions and limitations with what we can do, looking at mobility and stability through the chain and how we can improve that, you know, one is probably something that a lot of us have gotten away from, me especially, you know, really looking at different joints and, and how they move and this and that. That's a great thing you can do when you're trying to continue to elicit performance improvements, but not, you know, beat the guys up. And then different types of what we would all cringily call core training. What type of chops and lifts and pow-offs and things of that nature and different ways to add resistance, add disruption, force them to hold positions through different challenges that are going to be unique each time. It's nothing that I would say is exceptionally hard, but I would say they are challenging. It's nothing I would say is exceptionally taxing, but it's one of those things where you know you've done a bit of work. It's not one of those things where you're walking around sore the next day, but you know that, you know, you did something. But what I think is most important about it and, and how it fits into what we're doing more than ever is understanding that these multiple agendas or priorities that we have when it comes to training, these tertiary events, so these optional workouts, these extra workouts that we're doing, are serving for a multitude of things. The first is obviously to elicit the adaptation so that they can improve performance. The second is, lack of a better term, and some people will probably cringe when I say this, but to keep, keep them busy a bit. And I don't mean that as we have to fill their time. I mean that as if we're on the road or we're at home and let's say there are changes to the schedule, well, how can we go and do something for a half an hour to fill the time that was there that needed to be utilized before? It's a real simple, easy way to get good work done that isn't taxing, that doesn't beat them up, and is going to have a performance benefit, you know? And again, these are some things that have been around for a long time, that people have talked about for a long time. 
that we know are important that I personally have gotten away from, but because of the necessity for, let's say, an extra workout when they wake up to make sure that we're awake and ready to go when we get into video and meetings and walk through, or we have to change the schedule and push some things back because, you know, just schedules just are going to be super crazy right now. Hey, so we've got this other thing that we can do. So what I guess I'm saying is we've got just a, a multitude of different things going on. We've got our primary daily training program that we're utilizing that is specifically designed for each player for their performance to be best ready for the game. We have our extra stuff that we do on game days, still the fun stuff, the arm farm things that, you know, we get a good group of people together and we, we, we do the best we can with what we got to get a good game day pump on because who doesn't love a good game day pump? And then we've got our extra work where we have one to two different progressions that are set to allow us to continually evolve and adapt in things that we may not have spent as much time in in the past, some things where we can fill some buckets that we don't typically fill to hopefully help to continue to drive adaptation, improvement, resilience, and keep the guys healthy throughout the season. And I guess that that's what I think is the most important part to it. We're trying to find a bucket that we haven't been filling and try to fill that because as we know, the unique stimulus is going to allow the greatest adaptation the quickest. So while we're on the road, first trip for six days, then we're on the road four of the next nine days, that allows us four or five of these workouts to hopefully elicit an adaptation to help continue improvement. And then we just build off that and continue to progress, regress, depending on how the guys feel. But that's just what we're doing now. In my head, it sounds like a pretty darn good idea. I've been wrong plenty though, but I'd love to hear how y'all have changed. What are some things you're doing different with your teams now when you're on the road? How are you looking at situations now differently? You know, in the past, if someone would have told me it's, we need to fill some time, it would have been like, well, this is kind of dumb. But now I have a, a better understanding of what we're trying to do with it. So I'm more for it because we also have different progressions and different goals with what we're trying to do with this that all align and work together with what we're trying to do. So I guess at the end of it, as long as the goals are all aligned and the progressions are all moving forward, then these extra workouts should help us continue to move forward in a positive manner. So... We'd love to hear what y'all are doing. We'd love to hear what y'all are changing. And as always, truly appreciate everything you do for us here at Central for Virginia Sport Performance. We'll be back next week with another My Thoughts Monday. I'll see you then.